Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another video. In today's video I wanted to make a smaller warship. At first I was going to go for a Corvette class. Now for those of you who don't know, there are certain types of warship classes that go all the way up to battleship, dreadnought, carrier, and all that sort of good stuff. Usually starts off with like you have your fighters and drones, and then you have your patrol vessels, and then you have your Corvette which is a little bigger than a patrol vessel, then you have your frigate which is a little more bigger than a corvette then the frigate goes into a destroyer class which then goes into a cruiser class and then cruiser usually goes into a battleship and then battleship and it goes further up the, the chain right dreadnought carrier and all sort of good stuff now the navy has different ways of doing it and everybody has their different little classifications and whatnot but I'm kind of going off of things that I've seen from like Homeworld and EVE Online as well as taking notes from naval ships and stuff of this nature. If you Google Corvette class Navy vessel, you'll get a ship that's not as big as a frigate, but not as small as a patrol boat. And they're actually really nice, but that's besides. I'm getting off topic. Anyway, so as I was trying to design this Corvette, the ship started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I ended up actually reclassifying it as a frigate. The other warship, the one that I'm thinking about calling um, Centurion, so a Centurion class, is going to be classified as a cruiser. It's pretty big and not as massive as I would believe a battleship could be in KSP, but just a step under. So this vessel that I'm working on now, is I would, I, would, I would even go as far as maybe a Corvette wouldn't have armor. Maybe a Corvette would be maybe something along the lines of almost like an SSTO in a sense. It would kind of look more like a, um, it kind of have an aerodynamic shape to it maybe. Maybe it can land on a planet. Maybe that would be like the specialty of a Corvette. It can land on a planet and take off and whatnot. I don't know. But, you know, it's for, that's further down the line. This definitely was a little bigger than what I would say a Corvette should be. But that Oh, that's my that's my humble opinion anyway I'll grab them both in this video and I'll put them side by side and you can see what I mean even though yeah the other warship is definitely bigger and bulkier the smaller one is not too far away from it so that's why I reclassified it as a frigate now right here I was trying to get the RCS thrusters to stop draining fuel from the weapons and I did everything I disabled crossfeed from all of the docking ports. I disabled crossfeed from the decouplers and it was still draining fuel from the weapons. I even went as far as prioritizing the fuel so that it, the weapons would be the very last thing that it would take from. It, it was just, it, it's just a nightmare when parts don't work like they're supposed to. And I'm thinking that that's just another bug, one of many, to put onto the pile of KSP. I even went as far as putting structural panels in the way of the weapons so that they would maybe block it somehow, but that didn't work either. I'll figure it out someday. I don't know when, but I'll figure it out later. I mean, I would really hate to have to turn off every single fuel tank in one of those missiles. That's like... That, that take, oh my gosh, that take forever to off, turn the damn thing on and off. Anyway, now I did a mock battle to test out different things, such as weapons, armor, things of this nature, fuel consumption, and whatnot. And I learned a lot. Other than getting some really awesome destruction footage, I learned a lot. Like, for instance, the hammerhead missiles are uh, actually very, very strong. Very, very powerful. Um, I'd even say maybe close to or equal to full-size torpedoes. I, I'm not sure because when I when I fired the missile at a slightly older version of the larger warship that was already in orbit around Duna, either it was an incredibly lucky shot or there's something about that missile that I need to study further and look into. I'm thinking, my, my guess is that it was a lucky shot that the missile went right between the two heat shields and just kind of had a... a a perfect lineup right through the nose of the ship, completely destroying the nose of the ship, but not destroying the ship. Notice the ship survived, but the armor took most of the damage, but still a lucky shot nevertheless. Now there's some footage here of what I was explaining to everybody about missiles going too fast and glitching through the target. I slowed it down and you can see the torpedo glitching through the, uh, the actual heat shield of the frigate. It just completely 
passed it right through, didn't even touch it. I was going way over 500 meters per second. So if I would have slowed down to about 380, that's a really good speed for the uh, vessel to, for the torpedo to interact with the vessel very well. You don't really want to go any further than that or else you get glitching because of the Unity engine is kind of crap. Now, of course, I had to finish off the larger warship, finish him, which was pretty cool. The explosions and everything. It also helped me find out that the, uh, the lifeboat that's inside of the vessel needed some sort of thrusting, thruster maneuvering capability. It was kind of dead in the water. Now, so with the lessons learned from the battle, I went back into the hangar bay and I upgraded the larger cruiser. So instead of the heat shields both coming out at the same time, just one heat shield will come out at a time and there's going to be two of them side by side or no, on, you know, one on top of the other. So that one will come out and inflate and if that gets destroyed, another one will come out behind it and inflate. Kind of like dual shielding or something of that nature. But I didn't want that freak accident to happen again where the missile or it could be even a torpedo goes right through the middle. So instead, I'm just going to have the heat shield sticking out straight in front of the vessel. And because it's big enough, it can hold two. So if one gets ripped off, another one can take its place, which is a interesting and cool upgrade. I fixed some of the bridge problems because they were upside down and backwards. Gave the lifeboat some thrusters and maneuverability. And even though I put structural panels in the way of not only the docking ports and the decouplers for the weapons, the fuel was still being drained from them. I mean, I tried so hard. I did everything. Disable crossfeed, disable crossfeed this, disable crossfeed that. I even prioritized the damn fuel. And every time you load up and go back out or switch it's just it's just a freaking headache no actually no i prioritize the damn fuel but for some reason it well it doesn't matter to be honest it doesn't matter because it's gonna it's gonna drain fuel from the damn weapons any damn way no matter what i do so i would hate to have to go in there and actually turn off all of the fuel tanks that would really suck especially when you're trying to turn them all on in order to activate the weapon i mean i I'll find some way. I'll find some. I'll find something. I don't know what, but I'll find. I'll find a way. I'll find a way. Anyway, it's late. Let me go ahead and wrap this up. This is going to be a prototype frigate. I'm thinking of calling it a Spartan class because I looked up Spartan on Google and it's actually the definition isn't like warrior or something like that. The definition is actually like simple, frugal, um, not fancy or anything like that. So I was like, yeah, well, it's, it's right up the frigate's alley. It's definitely not fancy but Spartan still sounds cool so I'm thinking of calling the frigate Spartan class and the cruiser Centurion class but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and that'll be it for this video thank you so much so much what so much for coming <laughs> and thank you so much for being a part of this channel I am Veos signing off and have a good day bye for now bye bye